Hi, and welcome to this edition of Bergeron Briefs. My name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. Uh, if you haven't been here before, um, uh, I work at Myrick O'Connell. There are 60 of us in the firm, but I do nothing but elder law. I've started doing these interviews to really supplement the work that I do at the Senior Center in Tisbury doing presentations regarding various elder law issues. Because what you really need to know as a senior, there's a piece of that that's law, but the vast majority of it is really understanding who the, what the programs are that can help you and who the people are. The people are the key. Nancy Langman is one of those people. That's why I asked her on the show today. Thank you very much for coming over. And I know you're kind of in the middle of things, Nancy. You just finished the support group and you're doing something else. So, so start off by just telling us a little bit of like, what are you doing here? Are you a wash ashore? Have you been here for a long time? How did you start doing what you're doing? Let's talk a little bit about this, the, the, the support group stuff, and then let's talk about Memory Cafe. How's okay. that? Okay, so I am a wash ashore. I've been on the island full-time for five years, yeah. and part-time for about seven years before that. Yeah. Fell in love yeah. with the island and moved here full-time. Something special um, about yeah, the something place. Something special yeah, about yeah. it. Just what the, this is what the locals don't want to hear, that there's all of us that go, ooh, this is really nice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and right. we notice it in the summer as the traffic increases, uh, yeah. and yeah. everybody wants to be here. I, that's why I was late today getting out of Town. That's the way, and, and I'm, it's way bad it I'm starting to turn local, because I'm starting to get annoyed by the summer traffic. Not I, good. I counted the days till okay. September. The yeah, other day. yep, they, everybody does. So, <laughs> but we so. love the summer people, and actually, the summer people have been flooding our memory support group and our cafe, so it's been really nice. And you moved here so about five years ago. I came here five years ago yeah. to be the director of the mental health center. Yeah. Um, left there about a year and a half ago to pursue my real passion of working with folks with dementia. Yeah. Um, and I got interested in working with folks with dementia when I was down in Florida. I worked at the clinical trials company. And I did some therapy with folks, and I did some signing uh, people up for clinical trials. Yeah. Um, and got oh, fascinated. Oh, so you would have seen a lot of process. folks who have got, because it was some of those were clinical trials for dementia related. All of those were clinical trials for dementia. I oh, went to wow. nursing homes and out to physicians' offices and talked to them about the clinical trials. So I got fascinated in the process. But what I loved the most was working with the folks who, in fact, were struggling with dementia. Um, so while I was at the Mental Health Center, I wrote a grant yeah. um, to do a caregiver group. And following that, the caregiver group said, well, what about those of us who need a support group, those of us who have the dementia? Yeah. So I wrote a grant to FarmNeck, which they graciously funded and began running um, support groups. Those support groups ended after 12 weeks. We did two in a row. Yeah. And yeah. at the end of it, the group said, you're not going to abandon us, are you? And so Victoria Hazelbarth, my co-leader, and I have been doing these groups now for three years. And Victoria actually was on the show. She was the, my last guest. Right. She was, she was she here was, she was a terrific. bit ago. Yeah. She was terrific. So Victoria and I do a lot of work together. We do a lot of research together. Um, I ultimately went back to school and finished my doctorate and wrote my dissertation um, yeah. on dementia issues yeah. um, and kind and of immersed it, myself and in it. And it seems to me it was on support group Relate yes. things related I to dementia issues. Actually, was on issues. caregivers, yeah. um, but then got much more interested in working with the folks who, in fact, are struggling with the dementia issues. Uh -huh. So um, when I left community services, they we had tight space there. The group was growing, and we were Victoria and I were looking to um, move the group towards more art and music therapy, and it couldn't really be easily accommodated there. I went over to Featherstone, talked to Ann Smith, and within yeah. less than 24 hours. Her board agreed that this would move there, and they voted it as an ongoing program That's um, that great. they would support. At so Featherstone. It's awesome. What a magic place. It is what absolutely magic magical. Yes. Victoria and I pinch ourselves every week and say, how lucky are we to be here? So my, yeah. my paralegal, Brenda Costa, whom I think you have met, yes, who I grew have. up here, remembers walking over there all the time to, to muck the stalls, and that's how she learned how to ride. Yep. So to her, it's still, it's still, still a riding. still coming through there. Really? Yeah, we have our group in the A gallery yeah. um, up front, uh, in the Pebble gallery, sorry, the Pebble yeah. gallery. And periodically there'll be There'll horses be a horse coming behind. by? It's really great. Yeah, it's <laughs> That's awesome. Terrific. Yeah. That's terrific. So we moved there a year ago and yeah. we added music once a month and we added art once a month. And we've yeah. done pottery, we've done painting, we've been in the print workshop. But the magic people like painting. So, so just step back for a second. So I, I, rem I had would have assumed that a support group was a support group for people who were caregivers who were trying to find a place where they could kind of talk about what bad things happened the previous week and how to deal with them. But well, you're, but, that but still this happens at community services. Allison McKinley runs a wonderful caregiver support group mm -hmm. at community services, and we send the caregivers over there. But we're I working see. with the people who have a diagnosis of 
post-stroke dementia, yeah. Alzheimer's, um, a any of the number of things, Parkinson's, any of the things that might cause dementia memory loss. And so, are, and so when you're running the program at Featherstone, are those, are the caregivers with the folks who have got dementia, or, mm, or are they? Sometimes. Sometimes, but They're not always. They're welcome, but most of them don't come. I see. But some folks come as a couple. One of the things we found is that when somebody's newly diagnosed with Alzheimer's or another dementia, that they're very reluctant to show up at a group and acknowledge that that's what's going on. Oh, and yeah. sometimes their caregiver will entice them to come. Please come once and see. Almost always they get hooked in and really find so much support and so much caring and so much sharing that they yeah. stay. Now, I, I would, from, from a lot of the folks, as, as you know, I deal with, I always explain to my, that people, what my practice is, is people who are worried about Alzheimer's, people who have Alzheimer's, or people who know somebody who have Alzheimer's. Right. And whenever I do my, I do a lot of seminars, and my, my make-believe couple, Frank and Mary, their goal is always they want to die and be buried in the backyard and they just want to stay at home. Now, for my typical Frank and Mary, even the caregiver is often saying, is not acknowledging or doesn't want the rest of the world to know that there's someone with Alzheimer's. The, so, there are folks so out there like that. Um, there are like and, a lot. And we would there welcome are. them to come join us. It's actually Which is one, one of the reasons, reasons I wanted, we moved to the Memory Cafe. By model. the way, one of the reasons why I wanted to invite you on is that I think a lot of those folks are also people who are home a lot because they're mm -hmm. home a lot taking care of that, of that other person. Right? One of the things that's happened, by moving to Featherstone, yeah. we've destigmatized a bit the, the concept of memory support group, where we're doing some art, we're doing some music, we go to see every new art opening there. Um, so it, it's Oh, and that's right, because easier. they were always changing. Every month there's a new, or d roughly every month there's a new opening. Yes. And some of our members have actually put work into um, there. That's and our members are actually going to have their own art show. In that, September, we're having an art show. That's great. You, you, and you had told me that you were actually, today, you came from Featherstone, where John Zeisel is, right. who was one of my kind of heroes in all of this. I think, to me, his understanding of how to talk Alzheimer's and how to really empower people is better than that of just about anybody. He's great. And he stopped by. He, he, we'd invited him a long time ago to come yep. see us anytime, and he was in town and said, stop by. So he's over well, observing the group today and hearing feedback from Because he has a place. He's either in Chilmark or West Hisbury. He has a place here. Yeah. One, of the reasons why, one of yeah. the reasons why he comes over so much. So that's, that's, and that's kind of just where he has always talked about is really kind of the development of programs to help people or to encourage people at least on a weekly basis to get out of the, get out of the house and be doing stuff. Right. And connecting with people. The, the folks who come to our group, some of them have been with us for three years, and the relationships are very strong. They may not always remember each other's name, but the relationships are extremely strong. Right. Um, and that's what we heard today. We, we asked groups, what are you grateful for in terms of our year at Featherstone? And they're grateful for the fellowship. They're grateful for the information. We do a lot of health information yeah. for people. Um, yeah. We do nutritional, we do exercise, we do cardiac stuff. Um, we're just constantly feeding people information. The latest research, um, any of our, most of our members are pretty familiar with the latest research on Alzheimer's yeah. because Victoria and I both keep up with that um, and report great. it back. We do, I and, do And it's great because you can get, you, I mean, you go on the internet to look, and be, if you're a caregiver or, you're, or you have it yourself and you're kind of like, Ugh, you don't want to tell anybody, but you want to look around. Right. In the internet, you just get buried, you know, because everybody's trying to sell you something. Yep. Well, not. I, that, that's an example. That's pretty but much a lot true. of people. Pretty much true. But a lot of right. people. So it's easy to just waste a lot of time there. And so the greatest thing that you can give to many folks is just give them that filter through which to say, you really know how to look at this. So you Absolutely. really ought to look at that. And I have access to the professional literature. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at the professional literature um, to see what's going so on. So you're seeing kind of like cutting edge. Right. Cutting you edge know, stuff. What's Johns Hopkins doing? What's Mayo Clinic yeah. doing? What's, so, what's Mass General up to? So for you, now I'm, I want to talk about Memory Cafe in a sec, but so from your experience now that you've been doing this for a while at Featherstone, give me a sense of what, what has worked the best, what maybe had, what, what you were kind of surprised by, because I guess that's one of the interesting things about doing this is that you're constantly trying stuff and right. seeing what works right. and kind of what, 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 you, what you, you wouldn't repeat. What has worked the best? The best. The relationships. What does it's that mean? It's really about the relationships. It's about hearing someone else talk about their experience of what it feels like to wake up in the morning and feel like there's a door closed and they can't figure out for a while, where am I? Where am I? What's the day? What am I supposed to be doing today? Um, it's about being able to share that very deeply personal experience of people 
with each other. Today, one of the members said, I'd like to talk about the fall that I had a couple weeks ago and how devastating it was to me and how maybe it could be prevented so it doesn't happen to someone else. It triggered several people talking about very serious falls. They had down 12 stairs, yeah. hitting their heads backwards on the, cem the back of their head on the cement floor. Except that you don't want to tell anybody because you're afraid that that's going to cause all this other stuff to happen. Right, right. So right. that to, to give them that opportunity to share that with each other. Right. Well, and it's about so somebody compelling. who is a you know, high-functioning executive in a corporation who now struggles sometimes with people's names and being able to say, I used to, here's how I used to function, and I can't do it anymore. I'm getting better, but I can't do it anymore. And it's about one of our members who talks about the fact of how long it took him to be grateful to be alive and to be functioning at the level he is. As opposed to just feeling that. really bummed out about where you were versus exactly. where you are. Exactly. To just this be is saying, someone who thought he was going to die. Right. This is, right. So, this so is, it isn't about saying, you know, here I am on this trajectory and I don't like the trajectory. Right. It's like, here I am today and what a nice day to be on. Yeah. You know, there, on the planet. Place, there are worse places to, be, to have Alzheimer's than on Martha's Vineyard. This is true. Because I like there's that. so, you know, yeah. there's so many wonderful, well, it's like I always tell people when I'm here, you know, it, and they'll, they'll say, well, geez, you come over here a lot. I'll say, well, yes, every day in Martha's Vineyard is better than a great day at the office. Yeah. <laughs> so we're always looking kind of for an excuse to come over here. But I suppose that, and that's kind of generally true. And, mm -hmm. and, and going back to Zeisel, I know one of the things that Zeisel really talks about is, is that that's probably one of the best, one of the things that you, that you, that you, that you, the last thing that you would forget is this kind of proximity to nature or memories about nature smells and the, one of the best, most useful things is just being outside. I'm just imagining your people being at Featherstone now saying, Oh, it's oh, fabulous. What a we great actually time. don't go outside a lot because mm -hmm. we have a fair number of people pretty unsteady on their feet. Right. So we actually minimize the outside. Do you, have, do you have anybody that saw often. those horses and said, Hmm, I wonder if I'm really seeing those no, horses? Everybody, no, everybody stopped and watched the horses. And watched the it horses. It was like, you know, magical yes. to see the horses yes. go by. Yeah. So I didn't mean to, well, okay. I didn't mean to spend Another so much thing time, that works but that's great, yeah. trivia. We have discovered that people love trivia. So this morning we did a w old westerns trivia. You know, who, what, what woman had a gun was famous, what famous oh, gun great. woman was. Um, and what, what happened was very interesting, is people struggled to come up with the names. We would give hints. Sometimes it would be a pic pictorial kind of hint. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it would be the first letter of the alphabet. We used all the strategies that we talked to people about on how to, mem how to remember things and we demonstrated how they worked in each person. Oh, that's and great. And it was amazing. They loved it. They that's absolutely great. loved it. Yeah. So it was like one of them was, uh, Lincoln was the word they yeah. were trying to come. And yeah. I said, well, who was Honest Abe? And they said, oh, Lincoln Logs. That was that toy. <laughs> we did a toy trivia as well. So it was just incredible. And some of the folks came up with stuff like, uh, what was the ranch for the, um, what's the program where the Ponderosa? The Ponderosa, the Ponderosa. Yes. Gunsmoke. Um, yeah. No, and it wasn't Gunsmoke. What was that no, called? No, it wasn't Gunsmoke. Oh my God, this is terrible. So now, now you're going to trap me in that trivia. Right. We have to get to another topic. Right. So, so pictograms, that's another pictograms. thing we've discovered. And those are quite new to us. Um, pictogram where you have a picture and maybe a sign. Yeah. So yeah. um, can I think of one off the top of my head? Probably not. Well, see, but my problem now is I keep on thinking about what the, the show with the Ponderosa and I'm not going to be able to. It starts with a B. I can do, I can do okay. the music. It goes dun, 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 dun. But anyway. That triggers. I, I, and, That's and what and I happened bet the music this morning. Does too. The music right. will trigger your memory. Okay, so now um, I'm so really. So pictures I'm, yeah. and music will trigger your memory. And that's that art and music thing. Very deep in the brain, not affected by the Alzheimer's in the same way. Right. So, which is really fascinating. So now tell me about Memory Cafe. So, the me well, let me just In first In theory, tell you the reason why I invited you was to talk to you. Yeah, so, Cafe. but I've got to tell you this about the support groups okay. first. Okay. So we ran our support group yeah. with folks who had all the diagnoses. Yeah. And I, we began getting phone calls. What about those of us struggling with memory who don't have a diagnosis? <laughs> the, like we, all the rest of us. The, the rest of us. What yeah. about the rest of us? So we started a second group. Our second group is now so large, we may have to divide to three groups. Um, and that group comes, we do similar things with yeah. them, but kind of at a different level. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're not talking about Alzheimer's so much and dementia, we're talking just more about the memory loss piece and what it means. And we're referring some of those people maybe to get further evaluation. Sure. But most of those people don't have a diagnosis. Some of them down the road will have a diagnosis, um, but many of them may never have a diagnosis. There right. they are because they're just struggling with memory. Right. Right, and, the, so, and, the, and, they're, and they're sharing those same kinds of things with the exactly. other folks who are just struggling with memory. And feeling support around it. Which kind of gets you back to that where you started, which was this notion of 
the destigmatizing of this. Absolutely. That I, so, that so often Absolutely. I'll do I'll do presentations and say, you know, the thing about Alzheimer's is that it isn't considered a disease; it's an embarrassment. It's like, oh my God, you know, what, you know how you know, how can this be happening to me? Good friend of mine who 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 runs a council on aging is that's her day job. Her night job. She's now moved back with her mother. She's kind of mm -hmm. left her husband behind, who was okay with this. She's the to, caregiver. She's the caregiver. And she says she talks to her mother's old friends, because she's because the mother's in a ranch house, you know, living, but you know, now just with this with the daughter. And she, you know, she's talking to her friend to the old friends and saying, what, can you stop by? Right? And and they'll say, Well I, I don't have anything to say to her. Mm. There's, you know, she's not the same person. Mm. It's such a sad thing, right? As opposed to really being able to help people those folks to understand what it is you can say, you know, or how, or how you Absolutely. can talk, and to realize this is just part of this is living. Just I work like with people folks who have at a number Windermere of who have Alzheimer's, and I see them weekly. And yes. there's lots to be done with people, even fairly far along in the stage. Yeah. I do some watercolor with people, yeah. and out of that, they begin to talk about the things they're afraid of, about the changes. There's such an awareness until the very late stage of al Alzheimer's. There's really so like much awareness of what's going on in their own brain, um, and they're aware of how people react to them. And they're that's very the thing. aware of how people react right. to them. And so and much respect is so so important. Yes. Just treating people that that not change the way you treat people. That, that respect for them, you know, you don't treat someone differently who has a broken leg, right. you don't treat someone differently who has Alzheimer's. Because at the end of the day, that person with Alzheimer's may not remember wh what they did that day, but they're going to know whether they feel good about themselves. Absolutely. And that's, Absolutely. And that's related to all of those Absolutely. experiences. That, so with that in mind, tell me about Memory Cafe. Okay, how, did, so how, did you, how did that come up? Well, oh, and and, and how, what's it doing and how's it working? I heard that it had started from my friend Leslie Clapp, you know, okay. who was So I can't take credit for the idea at all. all right. So Memory, Memory Cafe, Cafe started in 1977, in 1997 in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. and they've been active in Europe. They came to the States later than that, and there's now 85 known cafes going, and there's a group in Massachusetts called The, the Percolator. Percolator, which I think you, you put us on yes. to. And yes. since I've been which on their great. email, two new cafes have opened, one in Lexington and one in Falmouth. Um, just like last week and one next week. Um, so Mary Wagner, who lives in Washington, D.C., and spends her summers on the vineyard, summer mm -hmm. resident up mm -hmm. in uh, West Chop, called me three years ago with the idea of a memory cafe when I was at the mental health center. I was way too busy to do one more thing. And so we, we kind of said, well, maybe later, but not right. now. Right. She then read about what was going on at Featherstone, and she called me again, and she said, how about now? So what I did is pulled together the key people. Victoria, Leslie Clapp, Ann Smith. Um, we invited Windermere at the time. Ann, Ann Smith. Ann Smith from Featherstone. From Featherstone, okay. And we invited Windermere folks over, and we said, you know, what can we do? Windermere does something called a music cafe once a month on a Friday, and they open it to the public, and they just have a musician there doing right. it. So they've done a little piece of this. So we, we got the right people together, and we basically volunteered our time to do this. Yep. We got a small family donation. Um, from for actually from the Wagner family mm -hmm. to help us get going, mm -hmm. and um, the Y agreed to let us use space there for the fall, for the spring time, yeah. and we began the cafe. And my husband Gary Cogley does the music for it, and he does karaoke and he does lots of memory music. He's um, and great ukulele. He, He's great ukulele. He does ukulele, guitar, the keyboard. He plays yeah. the bass drum in the town band. He's a little bit of a musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cla uh, a classic I, musician. And I can't carry it too. Right. Um, tough. Well, let's, tough. Well, let's just kind of load it on one <laughs> side of the family. That's the, the way it goes. So he comes every week because what happened is we were like, well, maybe we'll do music once a month. Well, that wasn't. People wanted the music every week. They come for the music. For the music. Um, so they come for socialization and they come for the music. Once a month, month MV Museum comes and mm -hmm. they do an art intervention. Oh, great. Which is awesome. And they bring some um, large, enlarged... Um, replicas yeah. of famous paintings, yeah. and we have a discussion about them, and the group really likes that. There's a small group of people who play cards every week. They like to play cards. There's some folks who've learned to play chess. We have one guy who's teaching people chess. He likes to teach. He's a good teacher. That's A couple great. people have learned. Um, we have some people who have a diagnosis yeah. who come because they come as volunteers. 
um, and they're not ready to sort of be part of the group. Yeah, yes. But they're happy to come help. Yes. And we love having them. And they're them. totally committed because they and get it. And they're totally committed. They get yeah. it. So it's really wonderful. We have about 25 people every week. Um, we had to move out of the Y for the summer because they're so busy. We're over at Hillside Village, and we're mm -hmm. there every Thursday from 10 to 12. There's no charge. There are snacks served. We have a lot of caregivers who bring people in. We're wheelchair accessible, so mm -hmm. we have numerous people who come in wheelchairs, mm -hmm. and everyone leaves smiling. What a everyone. wonderful thing. And, 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 awesome. and will that continue in the Y once the Y is back? This is a permanent program. We're desperately searching for funding. We have, at this point, we are all volunteering. There is it. no funding left at the moment. I get um, it. And we are, but you know, you we're to committed to keep it going. The but Center for Living, it's a Center for Living program. When they move into their new building, this program will go to the new building. What a natural fit. Yes. What yes. a natural fit. And I'm just committed to do it ongoing. I love it. It's, you know, it's like Wednesday morning and Thursday morning. Wednesday morning are the support groups at Featherstone. Yeah. Um, one from 9.30 to 11, one from 11 to 12.30. Um, no charge for those. Always snacks. Um, no charge for the art that we do or the music that we do. And, and for, the, for the Memory Cafe, is there, is there a structure to it? Because you really talked about a whole bunch of different things well, that sound like they're almost could be happening at the same time. That, mm -hmm. Yeah, and they are. So the folks are playing cards while the music's going on. So Absolutely. you're really trying to develop a cafe atmosphere. Yes. And people a come. A so totally safe cafe. Absolutely. And it can be what people want. We're doing music every week because that's what they're telling us they want. Right. Many of the caregivers who bring people who are in wheelchairs who may not be as conversant um, because of whatever um, illnesses they have, right. those folks want the music. That's what they're there for. But the caregivers are, want the support of other caregivers. And the caregivers, most of them are paid caregivers are bringing people they care for, and for them they say it's just the best. You know, they're getting paid to do their job, they're making the person they care for happy, for they're sure. getting them out of the house, for um, sure. which is really important. They've got a destination right. that's a safe destination that there's no charge for. You know, they can't easily go to the black dog and hang out for two hours. They can come with us and hang out for two hours. What a um, great con And, and, and I my would husband does music that's related to everyone's high school years. <laughs> I mean, and he's always, you know, what, what haven't I played that you'd like to hear? He gets the music, he, he's got books he's made up. So we go, you know, page 27, people flip through and say, can we do page 85? Excuse me, Bonanza. Bonanza, absolutely. So of course, B. I said for, the, B, right? for the last 10 <laughs> minutes, I've been going, now I'm going to finish this show. Heard a thing I'm going to have, no, that's right. What were you talking about? What were you talking Nancy, that is absolutely <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. I, I keep saying, inevitably, I'm interviewing people here and, I'm, and I kind of like, font, you know, saying wonderful things about them. It's so exciting. It's, it it's very just exciting. so typical of what I find at Martha's Vineyard that you've got people stepping up, understanding that this really is a community. You know, we're all in this together, yep. and 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 being willing, to, and that's it, the key to Alzheimer's is being willing to understand that. Absolutely. What I was I was mentioning, and we have a great team: Mary Wagner, yeah. Leslie Clapp, Victoria Hazelbarth, Gary Cogley, myself. I mean, we just have that's, that's we have a, a team, team that's so devoted and committed to this, team. and we love it. And one of the things I was thinking about the oh, other day, I should I was, mention one uh, other person: yeah. Charlie Hodge, who's a retired neurosurgeon, yeah. is um, heads up our advisory board for the Memory Cafe, and we're just beginning to add a few people to that. And John Zeisel would be a perfect person for us to add to that advisory board. I think that would be an excellent if yeah. John is watching. And you right? may have another and, thought and, too. And, and, and some and some I have very few thoughts now. And now <laughs> I've passed Bonanza. I'm good. You're still I'm back now, on I'm Bonanza. Good, I'm good for the day now. <laughs> no, but I think this is something that once again through the show that people are going to be kind of aware of and are mm -hmm. going to be wanting to participate in. Because one of the things it always occurred to me regarding these memory cafes now that more of them are showing up, one of the John Zeisel's things is this notion of having a day of the week. It's Tuesday. Where are we going, honey? Right. That, that the person who is at home with the spouse or the other caregiver is just knows that there's something fun happening outside. Absolutely. And, and, but the more memory cafes there are, you know, the more variety you can provide for those Tuesdays, right? So that there really is a whole life. Absolutely. At, so our Wednesday people come Thursday. That's so great. We, we have a lot, of, a lot of overlap. That's great. I'd like to say one other thing, too, to make sure that people hear yeah. uh, how grateful we were to the Y and to Ray Whitaker who helped us with that cafe and hosted us in our startup phase. That's it was a pretty really wonderful, wonderful thing. It That's was very a wonderful, wonderful thing. Nancy, I cannot thank you enough. Enjoy, thank you for having me. Enjoy the summer. Enjoy the summer and good luck with the continuing expansion of the Memory Cafe and okay. all of the work. And come visit doing. us someday at the cafe. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you in the next installment of Bergeron Reefs. Thank you. <laughs>